In my last video, I stated how many different Linux distributions I've covered on my channel. I received several comments basically stating that is the problem with Linux. There's way too many distributions and we don't need that many. Well, I truly disagree. If you asked any one person out there what kind of snacks they like, how they like their food cooked, how they like anything in general in their lives, you're going to ask a hundred people, you're going to get a hundred different answers. That's why I think choice in the Linux community is perfection. As many distros as we want to use the tools that we want the way that we want. So what we're going to do today is we're going to cover a brand new Linux distribution that's based on Debian that I believe is really beautiful from the screenshots I've seen because when I boot it up into a virtual machine, you're going to see it for the very first time just like me. That's what we're covering today on eBuzz Central. Now, I usually start my videos off by letting you know that this video has been brought to you by the eBuzz Central store. But I have received several comments in the last couple weeks of people complaining, saying, why are you begging people to support your channel when you're making a killing off of YouTube? Well, no, I'm not. And if you know anything about YouTube, you would know this. Let's zip on over. I want to show you something real quick. In the last 28 days, my YouTube channel, if you look right here, has made $146.26. I'm not begging people to support my channel. I would love for my viewers to support my channel, and I will do that by any means possible, whether it be the eBuzz Central Store, whether it be Patreon, PayPal, becoming a member right here on YouTube, or maybe even buying us a cup of coffee. If you would love to support the channel, we need your support. These videos do take time, and they do take a lot of time to put together, come up with the ideas, and edit them. I appreciate everybody that views my channel, and I appreciate those that do support the channel. So, having said that, let's zip on over and take a look at Titan Linux's website. We are at the Tech Cafe website, and if you look, the top post lets you know about Titan Linux. It just basically states, Titan Linux is an all-new distro built on the Debian Stable Branch. It's a fully functional yet minimal KDE Plasma desktop experience focusing on usability and performance with a wide range of hardware support out of the box. The distro is designed with the user in mind, eliminating dependency on certain meta packages, making it a more stable system overall. Titan Linux is truly a unique approach to the Debian experience. And the developers are Matthew Moore and Cobalt Rogue. Now what I want to do is zip on over to SourceForge where you can download it. And when you get here, there's Titan Linux. And I will be sure to include all the links in the description below. And it just basically gives you the same intro that we just read. The developers are Matthew Moore and Cobalt Rogue. And then you do have contributors, which is Ben Fitzpatrick, Seeker, which both of those you know are involved with the Storm OS project and the Stormfish OS projects. And then if you slide down here a little bit, it lets you know there's a Debian stable base. It's on the 5.10 kernel. It's got a wide range of hardware supported out of the box and a minimal KDE desktop environment. And then you can also go to their GitHub from right here. So I'm going to go ahead and boot this up in a virtual machine and let's get on over to the desktop. And if you download Titan Linux, throw it on a USB or open it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. Right off the bat, I truly love the wallpaper that they're using, the Pegasus with the Titan logo. Aesthetically, it's really pleasing. And if you wanted to change this, let's just right click. We can go to configure desktop and wallpaper and you get, it looks like four different wallpapers. You can go with a solid black with the Titan logo if you wanted to. That looks really good. I also like that color. That's sweet looking. But let's look at this wave. That wave, I really like. Let's close out of that. I think I want to keep that one right there. Now, I do love the transparency in the panel below. I like the overall aesthetic of the whole operating system so far. So let's take a look over here. You've got your power button right here. Trash. Date and time. Let's see the system tray. You've got notifications, updates, and clipboards. As you can see right here on a lot of other KDE distributions, you have a lot of different choices in here. But I think they're going for being lightweight with this distribution. And I like that. It's not filled with a bunch of things that some people probably won't use. Internet, USB, 
battery, and of course your audio. Let's go ahead and right click here. Let's edit panel. So you do have your more options over here so you can make your adjustments for your panel left, center, or right. And then visibility, you can make your panel auto hide if you want or intelligently hide, however you want to do that. Let's zip on over. You can still add widgets over here on your left. So if you want to add widgets to your system, you can right there. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. We're familiar with that. When we come over to the left, you've got Firefox as your default browser. Let's see, they do have Dolphin as your file manager. Let's pull this down here. I do like the look of that. I like the colors that they're using here. you got your usual suspects over here. Then you got your home folders right here. I'm not going to go too in-depth on Dolphin because those of you who use Linux and know Linux knows that it's a great file manager for people other than Linus. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And if we come down here, let's go ahead and open up settings. System settings is right there. And you kind of get that old layout as opposed to everything being lined up on the left. But I do believe if you go up here and configure, you can go to a sidebar view if you wanted to and bring your sidebar back right here. But that's truly up to you. If you're somebody that likes it better the other way, I'm going to go ahead and put it back because that's the way it comes out of the box. You've got your global theme here. Let's go ahead and click on that. And right now we're using the dragon theme, which I love. You've got Breeze Dark and Breeze over here. Of course, you know you can go down here and get a new global theme. Just click on that, and it brings you up a bunch of different versions that you can download. And then you've got your base settings, colors, fonts, icons, cursors, startup and shutdown. Let's go ahead and look at system information. This is Titan Linux 1.0, a cast, a cast. I'm not really sure on the pronunciation of that. If you know how to say it, drop it down in the comments below. You're on KDE Plasma version 5.20, KDE Frameworks 5.78, and you're on kernel 5.10.0-13. So that's pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's see what else this comes with out of the box. Development, you're going to have translation, icon browser, graphics, LX image screenshot and then internet you've got your Firefox multimedia you have VLC player office QPDF view and as you can see this is pretty lightweight you're not going to have a bunch of applications installed out of the box then settings grub customizer and system settings and then your system you've got discover software center let's go ahead and open that up and the Discover Software Center opens up. Let's go ahead and maximize that so you can see it. And if you're used to using Debian-based distributions, you've probably seen Discover before. And right now, it shows that we have 11 updates. It'll show you what we have installed. You can also go to Settings and About. But what I want to do right now is go ahead and see if we can do a search. Let's go ahead and look OBS Studio. Now, with this not being installed, it usually gives us a problem, but no problem. There's OBS Studio, and you've got reviews down here. You can install it from right up here with a click of a button. So this goes pretty quick. I like the theming that is on this system. Let's try uh, Caden Live. And there's Caden Live. I do like the responsiveness of the store. There have been a lot of Debian-based distributions that when I go into their store and try to look things up, you just can't. It gives you a hard time. So I, I do like that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the Discover Software Center. And we will go back down here and we'll go back to System. Dolphin we've already looked at. Info Center. KDE Partition Manager. You've got your KSIS Guard, your System Monitor. Let's take a look at that. And we will go ahead and maximize that. This will show you all your processes that are presently open and then your system load. Right now, I've only got two CPUs issued to this machine. We're using about 10%. On RAM, we're at about 0.65 gigabytes. So we're about 650 megs of the 4 gig that I have issued to it. Now, we will probably get something that looks a little different in the terminal. We'll check that out here in a second. But that's pretty normal or a little bit lighter than most KDE distros actually. Let's zip on over and take a look at the terminal real quick and see what we're getting on it. Let's go ahead and type in terminal. There's the Q terminal and we'll see if they have HTOP installed. 
We'll go ahead and maximize that. There is no H top, so let's go with top. And right now, it shows that we have four gigabytes of RAM. We're using about 700 megs at rest with the terminal open. So that's pretty good. I remember when I was running my Manjaro, I would usually run around 900 to 1.1 gigs. So it's really what your personal preference is, especially with things that you might add to your OS or not. But that's pretty lightweight for a KDE distro. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's zip back down here. Let's go back to system. We already looked at KSYS. You also have the Muon package manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And this is just another place that you can add software or applications to your system. So I'm pretty sure if you just go up here and do a search, OBS Studio. There's OBS Studio right there. You would just click on it. It shows right here that it's not installed. You could come down here and mark it for installation. And it'll let you know right here, these are the, the dependencies required to install it. You just click OK. And it's marked for install. Then you could go up here and search for other software if you wanted to, like Caden Live. It would bring it up. You could go ahead and mark it for installation. It'll show you the dependencies that are required, and both of those are marked for install. Then all you'd have to do is go up here, apply changes, and it would install it for you. You could also search by category if you wanted to over here, or by status, origin, or architecture. So I like the Muon Package Manager. I may not like it as much as Synaptic, but that's a personal preference. But that's one of the beauties of Linux. You've got different tools for different people. Yes, a lot of people will say those tools do the same thing. But at the same time, people get comfortable using specific things. And I think having a selection or having a choice is definitely important in the Linux community. So let's go ahead and close out of that. We will come back down here to system. And we just looked at Muon. So let's back up. And we will go to Utilities, which you got Arc, Emoji Selector, Featherpad, KCalc, and KFind. So that, guys, was a really quick look at Titan Linux. I think it's great. We have another Debian-based distro, one with the KDE environment, and one with a light KDE environment. I recommend that if you're a Debian user or maybe an Ubuntu or Linux Mint, zip on over, download Titan Linux, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, Take it for a test drive. I'm pretty sure you will not be disappointed. And don't forget, zip on by the eBuzz Central store. Take a look around. If you see something you like, go ahead and pick it up. And if there's something you would like to see on the store that's not there, please drop that in the comments below and we'll do our best to get it up there. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. And if you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, going over to PayPal and making a donation, or zip on over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.